What's up, High Park Student Ministry? Hey, I hope you guys are doing well. I loved meeting with you guys all together in our student ministry-wide Zoom meeting. I hope uh, you guys were encouraged by getting to see one another as well. Uh, but I absolutely believe in table groups and you guys doing life together. And so I don't want to neglect uh, you guys and your time together at all. But again, I enjoyed getting to see you guys. And so uh, we are wrapping up our Journey of a King series, right? The study of the life of David. And so we've seen David through it all, man. He has had a roller coaster of stuff happen to him, right? Crazy predecessor Paul, uh, Saul. Uh, he's anointed king, battle victories, hunted down, became king, sinned against God, and then lost his firstborn, right? Uh, if you continue through the book of 2 Samuel, uh, you'll see his crazy family come out, right? So his son, Amnon, uh, rapes his half-sister, Tamar, Yikes. Absalom, Tamar's full brother and David's son, kills Amnon. Okay. Uh, Absalom rebels against David, his own father, but then he himself is killed. David goes through some more intense battles with the Philistines. David goes against God's orders and takes a census of Israel. Uh, David begins construction on God's temple that Solomon ultimately finishes uh, because God tells David, hey, you're a man of blood. You're not going to get to finish the temple. Uh, and then David dies around the age of 75 which is crazy because all the stuff that happened in David's life, you would have thought the man was like 200 years old, but just 75. Uh, and so if you guys want to read this stuff on your own uh, and read it on your own, I'd encourage you to continue this study of the life of David by reading uh, the rest of 2 Samuel and then checking out 1 Kings chapters 1 and 2, right? And so David ends his life kind of going up to that point. My word of advice while you're doing that too, just to help, uh, I'm a very linear thinker and so I like to have bullet points and how things progressed and so it helps me when I read those if I take some bullet points notes as to what's happening so that I can look at it later and go, oh, okay, this is how David's life progresses. So there you go, that's, that's my two cents. Uh, though David did have his moments of disobedience, uh, he was still noted as a man after God's own heart. And so if we desire to be men and women of God, uh, I think we need to take note of David's character character and how he lived. And so one huge trait of David's life we see is his humility. If you have your Bible, open up to Psalm chapter 40, Psalm chapter 40. And so in looking uh, at our chapter this morning, I want to answer the question of what marks someone as humble? And one attribute that I would say is uh, an absence of entitlement and absence of entitlement. Psalm chapter 40 verse 1 says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. David waited on the Lord. He didn't demand. He didn't feel like he was owed an immediate response. In Psalm 27 verses 13 and 14, it says, I believe that I will look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And then it says, wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Entitled people demand. They want it now. Humble people wait patiently. Uh, and to add to that, being a follower of Jesus does not just mean that you have no desires. Because uh, I think a lot of us think it's like, well, you know, I'm not allowed to want anything anymore. Uh, but being a follower means making God's desires your desires. Exchanging your old selfish point of view with God's eternal perspective. All right, point number two, another characteristic of what makes someone humble is a recognition of who is in charge. Uh, check out Psalm 40, verses 2 and 11. All right, so we'll skip down. Verse 2, it says, uh, He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. As for you, O Lord, I will not restrain your mercy from me. Your steadfast love and your faithfulness will ever preserve me. David knew where his help came from, and it was not of his own strength. Humble people don't let pride dominate their actions. Pride says, I've got this, I don't need help. Humility understands there is someone greater in charge and that God can step in whenever he simply uh, wants to and whenever we let him in. Uh, Psalm 121 verses 1 and 2 says, I lift my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. As awesome as you are, as amazing as you may be, recognize that everything comes from God. 
Don't ever find yourself forgetting this because uh, it's the attitude of self-sufficiency that will drag you away from your relationship with God, not closer. Our third uh, point this morning, our third characteristic uh, of, of David's life that we can learn from in applying humility to our own lives is you speak. So after you understand the first two things, right, you speak. You give recognition where recognition is due. You open your mouth. Psalm 40, verses 3 through 10, read that with me. It says, He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear to put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after a lie. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than can be told. And sacrifice offering you have not delighted, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Verse 7 says, Then I said, Behold, I have come in the scroll of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Behold, I have not restrained my lips. As you know, O Lord... I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. God is worthy of all our attention, all our hope, praise, worship, and thanks. Don't neglect or shortchange God for how he's shown himself so faithful to you. 1 Peter 2, 9 says, We're called to proclaim the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness. Peter says it perfectly in the book of Acts when uh, he says that he cannot help but speak about what he has seen and heard. You know the mission Jesus has given you, right? The Great Commission. Speak. Let the things of God and, and all his great mercies dominate your mind, your lips, and your conversations on your social media even. We should come to a point that not thinking and speaking about God becomes weird to us because he is our life and our everything. Imagine this with me, right? If, if you've never seen color before or, or you've been deaf your whole life or you've never been able to walk, if you've gone your entire life without being able to, to do these things and then one day you could, all of a sudden you can see colors you've never seen before or heard sounds you've never heard before, walk for the first time, what would you do? Well, your natural response is going to be to be able to do those things. If Jesus has given you life and you now know that life from the death you once lived, how can you not help but speak about it? Our final characteristic of a humble person is short. Uh, they understand their place. They understand their place. And so in Psalm 40, verses 16 and 17, it says, But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say continually, Great is the Lord. As for me... I am poor and needy, but the Lord takes thought of me. You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, oh my God. Humility is not saying you need to have poor self-esteem. It's saying that you know your place and your role and that you know you're standing with God and in that you live. Remain humble. Remain in constant recognition of who is in charge and who is worthy of all praise and gratitude. All right, I hope you guys have a great lesson this morning. Uh, dive into it, get after it, and stay focused. All right, I miss you guys, and I hope to see you soon.